Hello, this is Daniel and welcome to part 19 of the character modeling tutorial. Let's continue with the hair. So, the last part to do here is now the strand in front of the ear and I'm going to do that again in real time because we skipped already so much. Um, of course you can finish it with the same techniques uh, but if you want to follow the tutorial again feel free to do so. I really hope that this tutorial is not getting too boring. Um, you see that the actual purpose of this tutorial is not to um, have people follow it step by step and try to match every single vertex the same place that I have it. Um, actually the way I thought of it was that there should be at least one tutorial out there simply showing someone modeling a character in a decent quality um, available basically. I, I just wanted to put one of these videos out there on a series like this so that newcomers can uh, watch through that not even following necessarily um, but in the end they should have an idea about what's necessary for character modeling. So I hope that, I uh, really hope that that's how it was helpful to you or maybe you're just following it as well. Um, I mean if, if you like that that's okay but I can imagine that it's quite boring to you. Well maybe it's not, I, I mean I, I don't know. I would feel bored at least but yeah I shouldn't assume right away that you're bored. Anyways, if you like it, I'm, I'm glad about that and um, yeah, I hope to, to I hope you will stick around in the next few videos as well. So, because we have already come quite far, it's not so much left to do. I guess in, in maybe about five parts we could be done with the modeling um, but you know, that's just in my estimation probably it will be longer, could be even shorter, I know. Let's see. So you see what I do here is pretty similar to what I've done before. It's just the same thing again. Um, yeah, not much difference. Yeah, and by the way, since I've never asked about that, um, I mean, I think it's interesting in general how I make a video and I know when this is published, this question will be so uh, outdated, but um, if you want to give me some feedback about the tutorial and tell me how I can do it better or uh, suggest me different topics or if you like modeling tutorials like this, but you wanted a different model, just give your su suggestions in the comments and I'll look at them and try to, try to do something about it. Uh, yeah, so always feel free to, to write something in the comments. I'd be glad to read it. So, again we'll um, connect these as we did earlier. And like this. So I'm still not sure uh, what we're going to do with this model once we're done because I think I'll publish the series when the modeling part is done and from there on I will create another series uh, about how this could be continued. You know as for example 3D print, animation, posing, illustration, whatever you'd like to see. Um, yeah, we'll see later on and about that of course leave comments if you have su suggestions or you want to know, uh, you want to let me know what you'd like to see because maybe that will change the, the next tutorial or actually I don't know, you know, since this is the 18th part and this is going to be published in probably a month from recording date yeah, I mean I will always be happy about <laughs> feedback and we'll definitely read it when it's published but you know who knows what I'm up to in a month there are lots of other projects I'm also involved in which I love to talk about sometimes but yeah 
whenever there is something to cool up to show um I'll make sure to make a video about it So what's now to do is um, closing the hair at the top. That's our current challenge. Um, after we've fixed this, as always, I cannot leave things like that <laughs> unfinished. Alright, now we need to close this up there and basically what you want to do is you can start by closing this part at the, at the back because you want to have one closing loop to finish this off but the rest uh, will be connected all into this area and you want to try to do all of that with just um, quads, you know and you want it to look rather sharp where everything joins in without having you know that triangle fan stuff that you can generate for example when you create a new circuit so let's connect it like this you see while I created this I looked a lot at the surrounding vertices and you see how well this matches up right now that's just because while I create new vertices, I always make sure to view the surroundings to see if this is if this matches or not. That saves me quite some time. Now over here, we don't want to have too much of um, you know of hair going inwards. It would just look a bit weird. Um, that should be fine. You know, in the end, we'll just smooth everything out again, and it will be all right. Um, let's see. Let's just guess that this one will go somewhere here. And now we'll try to connect everything here. Now this is a hard task. <laughs> you always have to decide where you can um, do some of these and where not to and there is like this big sp problem with space you always have not enough space for it um you can also go back and do stuff like this um uh, actually you know don't care so much about triangles i think it's at this point it's really it really doesn't matter and also we're going to subdivide it anyways and you see there was a triangle here and it should be gone in in subdivision surface everything should be quads and if you apply that yeah you'll pretty much get rid of everything anyways so the only th disadvantage you have when using triangles is the loss of control and at this extend I think is acceptable since we're since this is yeah it, it we get the same shape anyways uh, same shape so it's really nothing too important in my opinion but you know other people will say the opposite um, you'll have to see for yourself what what's the best solution for you And if you find anything out about this or hear about the real reason why you should never use um, triangles and and angons, let me know. I'm really interested in that as well. I just do it because it has some advantages, but there are really some situations where I think it's unnecessary.
All right, so this is definitely the messiest part in the entire model. Um, but you know, what I always tell myself is that, well, there is not much animation here. There will definitely not be much movement in this area. No dynamics, no animations, nothing of that kind. So we won't get any deformation problems here. The other thing is, um, it still looks good. I don't see many artifacts or something. In in fact, it's it looks just like what I wanted to have, except some uh, some little problems that we are still going to fix. Um, so yeah, even though this is completely horrible, and every 3D artist in a professional field would say, uh, "Don't do it like that." Well, I'll still do it like this because I've done it a couple of times and it has worked and even in 3D print and such um, I do not think that you should not try to learn how to do it better but because I want to do things fast uh, for this tutorial's sake um, I will not bother much more with that Yeah, that's that's how it is. Hope that's all right with you. So it's not wrong. It's just my way of doing it. Don't forget that. So now with that, we have basically the front part of the hair completed. And next time we'll be doing the back part of the hair. Alright. I hope you're happy with how things go so far and I hope to see you again in the next video. See